Yes, water can kill you. You don't believe me? This mother of two just died from drinking too much water. 35-year-old Ashley Summers apparently overwhelmed her body while trying to hydrate in the summer heat. So wait, water is bad for me now? And the answer is yes, but also no. But don't worry, I'll explain. But first, this story. Mauro Prosperi is one of the longest people to survive without water. In 1994, while competing in a marathon in the middle of the Sahara Desert, he got separated from his group by a sandstorm. Mauro seemed prepared for a situation like this. He had a knife, a compass, a map, and ironically, dehydrated food. But what he didn't have should be obvious at this point. On average, people can survive around three to five days without water. But in nothing short of a miracle, Mauro survived for nine and a half days. Dehydration hits you in waves. Stage one of dehydration is thirst, which Mauro got around by drinking his own urine, which helped a bit, but then the second wave overcame him. Because in the second stage of dehydration, the body retains all fluids, including urine. By stage three, dehydration organ damage is your biggest problem and desperate to stay alive. Mauro tried to prevent this stage by drinking raw bat, snake, and lizard blood. Luckily, on his last day alone in the wilderness, he was rescued by an unsuspecting little girl who saw him and ran for help. After a week and some change of punishment, it took Mauro's dehydrated body two years to fully recover. That's amazing superhuman ability, but what's even more shocking is the unbelievable twist to the conclusion of this epic tale. But that's coming up later on in the video. Everyone knows what dehydration feels like, but first let's examine three less obvious side effects of not drinking enough water. Our bodies are roughly 60% water and maintaining that level is essential for good health. Doctors recommend that the average adult drink about two liters of water per day. Broken down per drink, that's about eight eight ounce glasses. Your brain's function and performance rely heavily on proper hydration. The next time you feel dehydrated, take notice of your mood. Some people become depressed and unmotivated. Others get really snappy and you might be one of those few that are overcome with anxiety. Staying hydrated is essential for proper brain function and performance. But maybe you suffer from migraines. A trigger of some headaches is a lack of water. Some studies, although inconclusive, point to drinking 1.5 more liters of water per day as a factor in mitigating those excruciating migraines that you might be suffering from. And although studies are relatively new in this field, scientists have found a direct link between a thicker brain cortex and higher intelligence. Essentially, the less water you drink, or the more water that leaves your body, the dumber you get. Because your brain, specifically white matter, gray matter, and the cortex, all shrink and become less effective. This 28-year-old mother of three died after drinking too much water in a radio station contest. Just last month, this 10-year-old boy ended up in the hospital after drinking six bottles of water in an hour. He started getting disoriented and couldn't make a sentence. I mean, couldn't answer us. He couldn't stand up. I felt like I just passed out on the spot and then I couldn't remember anything. So if our bodies depend so much on water, then how did this woman die? And why did this little boy suffer these life-threatening effects? Let's examine the way water affects hydration and how it all works. Being hydrated is not just about drinking enough water that gets into your cells, although that is a huge part of it. A hydrated cell is one that has the proper balance of water and electrolytes inside and outside of that cell. A dehydrated cell is just the opposite, where there is an imbalance, not just a lack of water. In fact, drinking too much water can dilute the sodium in your blood and lead to serious health problems. Drinks with high levels of caffeine, sugar, sodas, and even fruit juices, especially from concentrate, can pull the water out of your cells and make you feel dehydrated. More on this later. But wait, I drink eight beers when I'm out with the boys and I'm not dead. And if water is supposed to be the healthier choice, how does it kill people but not alcoholic drinks? I'm confused. Well, alcohol does the exact opposite of water. It acts as a diuretic and strips the cells of water and electrolytes, signaling the body's thirst mechanism. But instead of drinking more water to quench our thirst, what do we do? We go and take a piss, drink more alcohol, and in the process become more parched. The kidneys work hard to filter out the alcohol and we end up peeing a lot more frequently, losing water and electrolytes in the process. 
This is why we wake up the next morning with a hangover, a headache and pasty lips because there's just not enough water in our system. So what's the best way to hydrate our bodies? To stay hydrated, cells need water and all of the necessary electrolytes which are sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium. These help retain fluids and maintain proper balance within our cells, as well as drinking enough water throughout the day. But realize that our cells do a great job of holding on to water, so if we drink an adequate amount each day by not drinking fluids that strip our cells like alcohol and sodas, we can remain hydrated for longer periods of time without suffering that sharp drop off. In fact, you actually don't even need to drink the prescribed 8 cups of water per day because your kidneys are so good at their function. But let's just say you wanted to test to see if you're drinking enough water. There's an old school home remedy that you can try. Collect your urine in a container and look at it to see what color it is. Most people say a pale to light yellow color is fine. If it is almost clear, then you might be going too far in diluting your blood. But if it is extremely dark and has a heavy scent to it, you definitely need to be drinking more water. But here's a more scientific approach that's a lot more accurate. You can purchase urine test strips online or at your local pharmacy that measure something called specific gravity, which measures how concentrated your urine is in comparison to pure water. For example, water has a specific gravity or density of 1, and urine should have a density in the range of 1.002 to 1.030. The closer you are to the density of water on the scales, suggests that you should take in more electrolytes or drink less water because your urine is diluted and vice versa on the opposite side of the scale. But how much is too much and will it kill me? A good rule of thumb is to pay attention to your thirst mechanism. Only drink water when you feel the urge to because it's your body's way of protecting itself from dehydration. But when you've had enough and aren't thirsty anymore, don't try and force down more water. This can lead to water intoxication and cause serious ill effects, the worst of which is death. But don't worry, you have to go seriously overboard in a short space of time for this to happen, so no worries. But let's get back to our story at the beginning of the video. This ordeal is marred by controversy, accusations of false tales, and it seems a little jealousy as well. According to Patrick Bauer, it was all a story that Maori made up to make money and strike a movie deal. Prosperi, on the other hand, claims that Bauer is just jealous because he actually ran in the marathon, actually got lost, and actually survived to tell the tale. Bauer, the founder and director of the race, had a desert experience himself in 1984 where he voluntarily embarked on a solo expedition 200 miles across the Sahara Desert. He said, People thought I must just be mad. It was just a personal quest, something that I had to do. Bauer spoke mystically of the prolonged solitude he had experienced, shooting stars, and what the desert had done to him once he was dropped off. When Prosperi was disparaged by Bauer, he cracked lightly that Bauer failed to mention that until he was prompted by a journalist who knew the real story that he had actually been accompanied on this so-called solo trek by his brother and girlfriend who had followed him in a support vehicle. So who had the more exciting story? Well according to Bauer he says that they never helped him in any way, they were only there to document the experience. Bauer said that Prosperi would have to be superhuman to survive that amount of time in the desert without water. Prosperi's response? Me? Superman? <laughs> well, yes, precisely. But here's a question for you health conscious individuals. If water can kill you, then what might this be doing to us?